Please welcome Tamika Foster Raymond. What, you know, what a fascinating book. I know you debated many years on whether or not you should write it, how it would be received. And I have to tell you, just so many things to talk about, but the most important um, is the loss of your son, Kyle. I was thinking yesterday, he would have been in his early 20s. Um, and there are so many moments of parenthood that we mark, and, and he would have perhaps even been in college or leaving college, uh, like so many other young people around this time. How do you describe the years, and even now, when you think about where he would be today? He was very, very artistic, so I'm imagining that he would have been on Disney by now. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, you know, his entire goal was to, um, be an actor, I mean, an actor on, on television. He wanted, he always said, Mom, they're doing auditions. We got to go to the Nickelodeon. And I said, Oh, we are not going to the Nickelodeon audition. You know, he, um, those were his goals, his, his dreams. And when you, or how do you process that those dreams would never come to be for him and for you to see him reach them? How do you process that? Well, I'm working on making them come, you know, to fruition. I have um, been working on an animated project that is starring him. And um, it's very, very cool. It's not a sad uh, story, but it's about a kid that deals with the classic middle child syndrome. And he's got bully big brother and irritating younger siblings. So yeah, the cartoon is called The Odd Life of Kyle Lyle. So he's gonna be on TV. Mm. And that's what we're talking about, like how to find the way forward, how you find your resilience. But I have to take our audience into the book where you talk about the accident that took his life. And you say Kyle was lying there motionless. He'd suffered a traumatic brain injury, also known as TBI. The odd thing is he had no other visible injuries, no broken bones. He was particularly unscathed physically. There was only that small cut on his head, which turned out to be a significant cerebral laceration. My beloved Kyle had suffered severe head trauma. He never regained consciousness. He was in this accident, jet ski accident. When you got the phone call, or when, how did you learn the news? I was actually, um, I just checked into a hotel. I was um, on a little vacation. And, um, and I'm always on vacation because I love to go places, like when the kids are with their dad or whatever. So I um, had checked in and um, I got a phone call saying, hey, there's been a little accident. It was kind of very downplayed. I think they didn't want me to panic. Like they didn't want me just to like, just lose my head. So he was just like, you know, I think you need to come back to Atlanta. You need to uh, come back. And I was like, really? Just getting a call from him saying that it was my um, first husband. It just already was a little odd. So um, I knew that it was more serious and I just kind of started to panic. Kyle was on life support for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Did doctors tell you, was there a moment where they said, he is not going to make it? Oh yeah, there were several moments, but uh, I was very vigilant, <laughs> I would say. Um, in the hospital, I, you know, I didn't let you enter the room. If your energy was off, if you were speaking anything but life over my son, you couldn't come in. So when the doctor would come in and say, you know, we've been, I was like, hey, 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 change your tone. It's because I really think, you know, there's power in your words um, and there's power in the tongue. And I felt like he could hear you. So it was very hard. They told me, you know, early on and um, it, it was very hard to hear. How does it, how, help me, I don't even know if there are words to describe it, but there you are, to your point, you are keeping the negative energy out. You are, I imagine, if you prayed, you were praying. You were doing everything possible. And then he dies. Your baby dies. Did you ask the question why? Did you feel betrayed by the universe? Did you say, wait a minute, you have called the wrong Kyle, not this one? Oh, for sure. I definitely felt that. Um, I came to, well, what I, what I did come to a realization is that we all have a certain amount of time on earth, 
whatever, whatever our time is, we don't know how much time we have. And I realized that he had fulfilled his contract. He had done what he was supposed to do on earth. And I know it's, it's hard when people hear me say that because they go, how can you say that? He's only 11, but he had made such an impact and he, he had such good energy and he was such a good person. And I remember we would go see horror movies and Kyle would say, I'm not going to watch that. Like he didn't even like that energy in his headspace. So I knew he was amazing. How all long did it take you to get to that point? I mean, you're saying you're looking at your 11 year old child who is no longer alive and you are able to process oh. in some remarkable way, I feel, his contract with the world was meant to expire at 11. I don't, I don't even know how, I can't even think that strong. Let me tell you, because it took a long time to get here. I probably figured this out in the last year. Oh no, I spent 10 years not believing it, in denial, still throwing parties. You know what I mean? I went a long time. You still did birthday parties and things like that for him? I always gave, anybody that knows me, I would give the most huge something on his birthday. I would go in, like rent a whole museum and start this and, and balloons and we'd have food and cake and performance. Like I would go crazy about this thing. I was like, this is not right. He's still here. He's, you know, I, I definitely wasn't in this space. It took a while. It took many losses um, and me replaying all these different things. I said, our lives are predestined. I think our path has already been decided. What we're going to be, what we're going to do is already in God's hands. 